What's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my wrap up for January. I did not read as many as I wanted to. I just ended up being really, really busy, but I did have, a, I don't know, an okay turnout, I guess. Had some like really good reads this month, but then I also had two DNFs for this month. So let's just go ahead and get right into this video. So the stats for January was that I actually finished five books um, and then I DNF'd two. So I tried reading seven throughout the whole month. I actually am still currently reading two other books. Um, and so I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish them in February, but I would like to finish them eventually. So I'm not even gonna talk about those in this video. I ended up giving one book five stars, two books four stars, and two Two books two stars and then i read four physical books two audio and one kindle so like that that doesn't obviously add up but that's because um a couple of the books that i read as a physical copy i also was listening to the audiobook like on my drive to work and then i would like read the physical when i would get home so i kind of like did both and then one book was from the library two books were from scribed because they were the audiobooks i listened to three books were either gifted or i won in a giveaway and then two books were from nick alley which was great you know that's always good to to read my night galley books. So the first book that I read in January was You Were There Too by Colleen Oakley. And this book I ended up rating four stars, but I just do have certain thoughts about this one. It was really hard for me to figure out if I wanted to rate it two stars or four stars, just because of, I don't know, slight offense I took to it, I guess, um, with it kind of dealing with infertility. I really care about books that have that like infertility voice in it just because I deal with that and so I don't like books that claim or have a storyline of infertility and then they kind of finish the story with everything wrapped in a pretty little bow. Now with this story I mean it wasn't wrapped in a totally pretty little bow at the end like there it was very emotional um, but just the whole point of the infertility was kind of like, I don't know, there was just something that I didn't like about it that I can't hate on here because it's obviously a huge spoiler. So I will pop my review up on the screen here. Just, you know, if you guys want to go check out my review on Goodreads, I think I talked a little bit more about it. And so you could go check that out. Um, but with me reading this book, like I literally finished it January 1st. So I don't remember everything about it or all of my thoughts about it. Um, so you might want to go check out that review because I do go more into my thoughts. Now, this book actually was about this lady who had these dreams that she kept seeing this like man, I guess that she was supposed to be with. And then she actually meets the man in real life. So, you know, she's already married, um, you know, her and her husband are just going through life. And then she gets introduced to this guy and it's the guy that's in her dreams. And so so that's where the whole like you were there too comes in. This book did remind me of the Taylor Jenkins reads like maybe in another life when I was reading the synopsis. But then when I was actually reading the story, it just wasn't as well put together. But I did like I was very intrigued by the story. That is why I gave it four stars because I actually it kept me entertained. I was reading a lot of it to like see what was going to happen. I did love the big like surprise emotional thing that happened at the end um i know some people don't like that type of stuff um but to me it was like the big wham that the book needed but i do still i don't know it just couldn't get five stars for me because there was just still something missing and i just wish that you know books in 2020 just kind of would just drop the whole infertility storyline because I don't know when I see the infertility storyline in thrillers it's always involving like the lady that's dealing with infertility being crazy or you know going into a mental hospital or seeing seeing things like seeing her dead baby or like things like that and I just wish that that would stop and then with these where it's more like women's fiction slash romance they'll talk about infertility and like how hard it is to struggle with and then at the end it's like this picture perfect thing just happens and not everyone gets their miracle and so if you are looking for a book that talks about infertility and it actually kind of like really touched based on how I feel All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover is a great book to read if you want to either have your feelings like resonate with a book or if you know someone that's dealing with it and you don't know like kind of how to 
you know, what they're going through, I feel like All Your Perfects really, really sums it up. The next book that I read in January was All the Ugly and Wonderful Things. This was a five-star read. I absolutely loved this book, and I know there's a lot of controversy that goes into this book. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it right here because I actually have a whole spoiler vlog dedicated to this book. I think it's like 30 minutes long, and I talk about all my thoughts and feelings while I'm reading it, when I finish it. Like, I feel like my thoughts kind of really take a journey in this book because a lot of people said or described this book as like an eight-year-old and an older adult man falling in love but to me that's not what it was to me this was not about a pedophile at all this was about two broken people that you know really come together and find true love in the very ugly things in their life and so they kind of find the one wonderful thing and that's that they you know both really care about each other and so you know a lot of people People are scared to go into this and they're scared to read about it because they think that they're going to be extremely uncomfortable but this author writes this book so incredibly well like there's multiple povs and even though i don't like that type of thing she does it so well this is one of the best written books i've ever read and this is definitely on my like top favorites of all time if you want to see all of my thoughts about this, I will have my spoiler vlog linked right here so you guys can go click on that and watch that. It'll also be linked down below as well because if you wanna finish watching this video and then go watch that one, but you definitely shouldn't miss out on my thoughts from this book and I really hope that everyone would read this. This is absolutely amazing and I am so glad that I ended up reading this and thank you so much to my friends who gifted this to me. The next book that I read here in January was Mother Knows Best by Kira P. Pikif, I guess is how you say it. This book I actually got from the library, so I did return it to the library, but it was actually being read for my NetGalley like backlist titles. So I'm glad that I got this one done and I did rate it four stars. This was actually a very different like original type of storyline uh, for a thriller. It was kind of sci-fi-ish. And even though this did kind of touch base on infertility, it was kind of more of a sci-fi-ish way and not just a, you know, you have to be in a mental institute if you've like had a miscarriage way if that makes any sense so this book is about this lady who actually was able to get pregnant she did have an eight-year-old but he suffered from a chromosome defect he ended up passing away and you know she is kind of going through life still thinking about that and her husband does want to have another kid but she doesn't want to have to go through something like that because it was so traumatic instead they are able they find this doctor where he is able to kind of do IVF like I think that's why I liked this book so much is because I have done an IUI and I kind of know a lot about that and so it was very interesting um, to read about kind of IVF in a book and so they do this IVF but it's with like this lady and the chromosomes of another lady and then um, like the husband. And so they are able to make this baby from like three parents. Um, and so that was like really interesting to read about. It wasn't too sci-fi-ish for me at all. Like a lot of times I don't understand what's going on in a sci-fi book, but this wasn't like this. It was very easy to understand. Um, maybe because I have like, I know a lot of the infertility knowledge, but I still think it would be easy to understand for somebody else. But anyway, so they create this baby and then there's like problems down the road and legal problems and and blackmailing problems and a lot of things and so this was actually pretty good like the twists were pretty good at four stars so I feel like it was a pretty decent thriller and I like the original storyline to it so if you haven't picked this one up yet it's actually really short and so it was really easy to fly through I think I read it in like one night and so do recommend reading this book the next book that I read in January was also the live show that I did for booktubers and brews and I did that with Emily Merrill from a little writer M and I will have our live show linked right here for you guys to go check it out because it involves Involves all spoilers we read say you still love me and I'm not gonna talk very long about this book because number one I do already have that live show and number two I gave this book two stars this book I just think that this writer might not be for me um, I tried reading the simple wild and I DNF'd that a couple months ago and so this is the second book that I've tried and you know giving it two stars I just I just feel like her writing style and her ideas just aren't something that I'm looking for in a book this is supposed to be an adult romance but it does flip back and forth between adult and young adult chapters most of the romance does happen in the young adult chapters this also happens at a camp it's like a what do they call that like a chance romance i think is what they call it i don't know nothing about that screams like something that i would like 
and I also found that the characters in here were very annoying, very spoiled and bratty and wealthy adults that were privileged. And I just don't really want to read about that type of stuff. When I read romances, I want it to be very like hard hitting and very emotional. And so this was a two star read. If you want to see more of my thoughts about it, um, you can watch the live show. So that's all I have to say about that book. Okay, the next book that I read, and I'm very sad that I only rated this book two stars because it is one of my favorite authors and it was Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is, I think I only have one more book to read by this author and I think it's the like novella, Evidence of the Affair. And so this was the sixth book that I've read from this author. And unfortunately I only rated it two stars because it just didn't pack the punch that her other books I know I rated Daisy Jones and the Six two stars, but that was understandable because it was a historical fiction and I just don't like historical fiction. So I totally understand why I rated that one lower. This one is a contemporary romance and those are some of my favorite books by Taylor Jenkins Reid. But this I think is her debut novel and you could just tell that the writing just wasn't as deep. And she has just come so far, you know, now with her writing and her, you know, ideas and just storyline skills and stuff like that. This is supposed to be an emotional read, but I just didn't feel it really. And I also didn't really like or connect to any of the characters in this book. It's about a couple that kind of just met or like they've only been dating for a couple months and then they get married pretty soon, which I can relate to because my husband and I met and married within six months. And so I did relate to that part of the story, but after only being married for like a week and a half, her husband dies in a tragic accident. And that does say it in the back so that's not a spoiler and this whole book is her there are some flashbacks within their like relationship but this whole book is kind of her you know feeling okay with the fact that she did love him just as much as if they had dated for 10 years or if they were married for 10 years a lot of people kind of dismissed her feelings of being a widow and being upset about her husband's death because they said you know oh well you hardly knew him like you were only married for a week you're not really a widow and stuff like that the story sounds like it would be emotional but like just the execution of it just wasn't very great and so i don't know i was really sad because I really wanted to love this book, um, but yeah, it just it just wasn't there for me, and it was just really really boring actually. <laughs> like honestly, it was very boring. But I'm really looking forward to reading more of Taylor Jenkins reads in the future. So hopefully, that was just that was just a dud for her. Okay, so the two books that I DNF'd for January was All Be Gone in the Dark, and I actually almost finished this one. Like I think I was three quarters of the way through but I don't count my DNF books as finished books because that's not how my mind works. Like they're just not finished. So I DNF'd this one and like the beginning of this was actually really good. Like the first 80 pages, I was so scared. Like I was reading it at night in my bed and I don't get scared reading books and I love like watching horror movies and all the type of stuff, but this was really scary. And I think it's because this act is a real thing that happened. This book was about the Golden State Killer and you know, he, I think it was like 50 murder, Oh, sorry 50 sexual assaults and 10 murders and so just reading about this and how he would like sneak into people's houses or they would come home and he was already in their house um there was just really crazy stories in here this was the first like true crime slash non-fiction type of crime book i've ever read like i read non-fiction but a lot of times they're like health or self-help based so i think that I don't know. I just don't know if that was something that held me back from it that I just don't really jive with that style. But also the author of this book had passed away before she had finished it. And so I think they just kind of like put together a bunch of her manuscripts and it was very choppy and just very unorganized. And that also contributed to me not being able to read it and finish it. Like I felt very, very bored. And I even tried listening to this on audiobook and I just couldn't get through it. So you DNF that one. Then the next one that I DNF'd, I DNF'd this one around 100 pages and I also tried to read it and listen to it and it was The God Game. And this was an ARC copy. This actually just came out in January, I think like the 7th maybe. And this is a like sci-fi dystopia fantasy book, I think, that I really wanted to try out because I love books about games and I love dystopia. But I don't know, the way that this one was is it really reminded me of Ready Player One, which 
I did enjoy it. Like I gave that book four stars and I listened to it on audiobook and you know, I really loved that storyline, but this one just seemed too much like it. Like I felt like I was, you know, reading about stepbrother of Ready Player One. Like it was just like, this is the ugly stepbrother of Ready Player One, I guess. I don't know. So I really didn't like how it just had the same vibes of Ready Player One. It seemed like a copycat, but then also the amount of pages that I read, like I thought that the God game was just what they were gonna call the game. Cause it's like an AI or whatever, I guess that is like doing this like competition or something but there was just so many derogatory terms about just like Christians and God in general because it was all based on that, that I just, I don't know, it left a bad taste in my mouth because I felt like it just didn't have to do that. Like I can read a book that's not Christian based, obviously, even with me being a Christian, I'm fine with that. I just don't like books that kind of are making fun of Christianity or like talking bad about it or just kind of like being blasphemous about it because you know i wouldn't want to read a book doing that to another religion either like i just don't want to read books that are making fun of another religion so i don't know why a lot of like things always do that like they always make fun of like christianity or whatever but just this i don't know it just left a bad taste in my mouth and i don't want to finish it and so yeah, that was it for my January wrap up. Those were the five books that I read, two books that I DNF'd, and that was that was everything. That's all I got to reading in January, but I think I'm gonna do a lot better in February. I already, even though today is February 2nd, I already uh, started reading a book and I'm really, really liking it. So I think I'll be able to fly through some books for this month. Of course, don't forget to let me know down in the comments if you read any of these books that I read and if you agree with my rating or disagree. I love hearing from you guys. And let me know how your reading went for January. Like, did you get to read a lot more than you thought? Like with this being the first month of the year, it's always interesting to see if people are like, you know, blowing their goals out of the way or if they're, you know, struggling already. But it was definitely a struggle for me. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you guys soon in another video. Bye everyone.